YouTube boss it going the goat house is back with the Arizona Cardinals video in our new series a team that I think people make the mistake of thinking they know what they are you know they're basing things off last year I think that's a big mistake like I said they could be sneaky a little bit of a sleeper team will break down why how they can be that team players to watch games to watch a lot more we'll talk about uh, first comment on this video the very first comment with a team that will decide which team I do next in the video. So a little different in this one. Playlist on the channel, pinned in the comments as well for the teams that we have done so far over halfway through. Top three things I think you should watch for for the Arizona Cardinals. Number three, run game. I, I think it's a lot better than people think. Uh, and again, I don't want to base too much off last year, but they were deadly on the ground last year. I think people don't really realize that. Statistically, they were actually one of the better teams. Um, I do think they'll try to focus on passing the ball a little bit more as they have Kyler Murray all year long now, and they do have Marvin Harrison Jr. and other weapons. Trey McBride's an up-and-comer. Uh, but I just think when people think about Cardinals, they go, yeah, this team, pretty good passing team. If Kyler Murray's out there, again, Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey McBride, but they just nobody talks about the run game, which is great for so many reasons that they could be that good on the ground uh, because – I mean, it's great if you have a great run game, but it also can open up. It can make teams think, like, we got to prepare for the run, but then they can throw the ball, and if teams are thinking, yeah, Kyler Murray and his arm and Marvin Harrison Jr., the guys I keep mentioning, you know, going into a game, they got to worry about the passing game, but then they could beat him with the run. So it's more than just the run game's good. It, it, it kind of creates some balance and keeps teams guessing, keeps them on their toes. But, yeah, again, they looked really strong on the ground last year. With, uh, you know, Drew Pensing's offense, you know, his background, uh, he re it really focuses on, you know, making sure the run game is there really solid. It's a really good scheme. So that's a big reason why why it's pretty solid. James Conner's been really tough. And they add Trey Benson, uh, who I think has a ton of upside. He actually, what people didn't talk about, he actually is a little raw at the same time of being uh, a guy that can produce right away. But he almost doesn't know his own strengths. He is a powerful, powerful back, and sometimes his running style is like he thinks he's a scat back, which he can hit the home runs, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. I mean, he, he we saw him, his speed at the combine, uh, but this guy has a lot more power than even he realizes, uh, and I think they'll get that out of him, and then he'll come become a total package type back with a little bit of time. But for right now, one-two punch and Connor and Benson, and it seems like they like DJ Dallas as well. Like it, 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 in Kyler Murray's running ability, you have to worry about him getting outside scrambling do they you know mix in any uh you know read option type plays it's definitely possible so it, it just kind of creates endless opportunities endless types of plays and scenarios for the Cardinals offense which is great so it's actually bigger than just the run game is better than you think uh, it creates so many different things here so uh, but it is a very strong run and it's crazy though like I'm trying to figure out which we're going to talk about more. This team's true identity, like, are they a stronger run team or are they a stronger passing team? And I think it's great when when that is a question. I, again, kind of going back to my point that it, the balance and it's tough for teams to deal, like, guess what they're going to do and game plan for. So that's a big positive to me. Um, and I'm very curious to see not only you know, what they're better than or like how good they are and what the run the pass, but what their true identity is. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, I love the secondary. I love it's a strong, talented, young upside secondary with some veterans in there, good veterans in there as well. I think it's very versatile. Very versatile. What they, how the different looks, they got different alignments, the different looks. I'm very curious to see. Oh, I have a feeling who's going to start, but the rotation and how they move guys around, and it's very, very well coached. Jonathan Gannon, what people don't realize, is one of the better uh, secondary coaches, defensive back coaches in football. He really is. Um, he he's a smart defensive coach. You definitely can't base what you saw, and we'll talk more about that as we get to number one. But you cannot base what you saw from. This coaching staff, this team, but specifically Jonathan Gannon, his defense, um, you know, last year, he didn't run exactly what he wants to run. He didn't run exactly what he ran when he was with the Eagles the year before, one of the better defenses in football, uh, because he really didn't, they weren't ready yet. You know, they weren't ready yet. They didn't really have the players, they didn't have the personnel there. So um, I, I, I like his defensive mind, you know, his scheme, uh, his 
what what's to come for this Cardinals defense and another step in the right direction as they added more guys, young guys in the secondary that have the ability to run Jonathan Gannon's defense, uh, which is, if we're talking coverages, is a mixture of coverages. You know, last year they kind of stuck to cover four, cover three, simplified things for the defense, for the players in their first year under Gannon and just maybe they didn't have the total players for that defense and it's more than just the secondary. You have to have good pass rushers as well to make it a little easier on the secondary to be able to run what you want to run. So I think we're going to – his defense really is a little more complex, which is a little tougher to learn, but it's good for opposing offenses with their game plan and just in pre-snap uh, situations as well. But they've added they've added quite a few guys. Um, Sean Murphy Bunting's been an underrated, solid corner. Uh, huge Max Melton fan. We'll talk about him more in this video. Massive fan uh, that I think is going to be really solid corner. Um, you know they they drafted Elijah Jones from Boston College, and it kind of goes into the versatility. Uh, Max Melton can play in, outside and inside. Um, I, you know, I believe Garrett Williams, who they have, could do either as well. Elijah Jones could do either. He's a good man coverage guy. Uh, Max Melton, I think, would be good in zone. And, man, they have veteran guys like uh, Baker and Thompson at safety. Uh, Taylor Demerson they bring in from Texas Tech, who is a, a guy that can play in a split safety and alignment, or he can play as a slot corner. So they have so many talented players that – have so much to their background and can do so many different things where to it fits Jonathan Gannon's defense very, very well to allow him to do more what he wants to do. And it kind of creates some versatility. So um, people are going to look at the secondary on paper. And go, oh, yeah, you got some pretty good veteran safeties and you got some young players, but Hey, it's a work in progress. Ah, it's, it's always going to be a work in progress. You have young players, but I, I really think it's a lot better than, than how you just look at it in paper. Yeah. Yeah. You know, on paper, I think it's a lot better, a lot more, complex in a good way than what people are going to say so I absolutely love the secondary um, I hope the pass rush does their part so the secondary's job isn't tougher um, really the thing what I worry about with this I would say defense with the team in general is the interior defensive line and run defense one of the worst football last year they do have a bunch of new names up there but that was kind of my only knock on their offseason with their additions like they got better how much better did they get up there I'm very curious about Darius Robinson but you know Bilal Nichols Justin Jones like these they're okay players um how much better did they actually get? Did they is it is it still a work in progress? Did they kind of put a band aid on? Um, the way I like to put it, put a band aid on the situation where it's it's a little better for now, but you're gonna have to rip that band aid off and really make it better um, to really fix the situation in another year or two. That's kind of my only knock, but I love the secondary and it goes way more than just how they look on paper. Way more than that, you have to realize. So love that. And kind of some things we kind of just talked about kind of going to number one. I was trying to figure out how to word this. But 2023 was an absolute mirage, meaning it, it, people think they know the Cardinals, who they are, their identity, for the most part based on last year. When you really don't, none of us know shit, really. Uh, and it may look, for the most part, like the same team. I know they've added some big-time guys. I definitely agree that they've added some big-time pieces. But you may think it's somewhat similar. It's really not because it's the same coaches as last year, but it's, re it's really not. And I think, and I think even some people realize that this is a, this is a fact, that this, you can't base things off last year. And that's what any team, that's all people want to do. I think it's a mistake. But with the Cardinals specifically, it's a major mistake. But I think people think, well, they didn't have Kyler Murray all last year. So he got thrown in there when they were losing. And then, you know, so of course, that's why 2023 was a mirage. I think it's a small piece of it, actually. I, it, maybe a little bit bigger than a small piece. It is a part of it, but... That's the starting point. They didn't have Kyler Murray in the beginning of last year. So now Kyler Murray is like full go off season, start of the season. Uh, they're not going to be dug, you know, deep in a hole when he comes in. That's a big part. Um, but it goes so much further than that. We actually already talked about the defense with Jonathan Gannon. He wasn't able to kind of run the Eagles defense that he ran, which was a mixture of coverages. They were the best cover six defense in football, and there is not too many teams that are out there running cover six. You don't hear about a ton. Um, and are they going to be the Eagles defense from Jonathan Gannon's last year there? No, there's still maybe one day, one time soon, but one day soon, but not yet. But another step in the direction where – Jonathan Gans, we're going to get see more of the, We didn't see Jonathan Gans defense last year. We didn't see it. We really didn't. And people don't realize that. Another step in the right direction. He got some pieces that we talked about with the secondary, especially, but throughout the defense uh, that helps him run and fits help. You know, it's not always about the very best talent, but fits 
help that. Um, so we're going to see more of variety in that defense, and that is going to start this year. It almost feels like this coaching staff is starting right now, and now we get to see this offense with Kyler Murray. I, I really think they held back last year. Uh, I, they, they, they took their time getting Kyler Murray back, and, and, and they didn't want to – at that point, it's like this isn't our season, and they knew that. And I love the uh, – there's there's such thing as being too confident, like just forcing things. And the Cardinals were not that last year, and it was a good thing. So I really think on both sides of the ball, they saved a ton. And I don't think we really saw what they could do or what. So I, I think that's good for so many reasons. I, I think it's a little bit of a mystery. It's to, to be determined. But why that's good is it... It's a tough game plan for opposing teams. Like they, they, like what, what do we expect here? We think we know what to expect based off last year, but they really don't. So I think that's a fantastic thing. But um, and who knows? Maybe they still struggle because they're still a work in progress. But it's definitely not because what they did last year. So uh, that's something to kind of get excited about. And it's it's kind of a it's gonna be a good learning experience for us. Like uh, we're gonna learn what the Cardinals are about this year. So um, kind of excited about you know that and what this team can become uh some players to watch we already touched on him a little bit i'm i'm the biggest max melton fan there is i'm pretty sure uh loved his tape i thought he was a late first round talent the cardinals got him in the second uh, i think a great fit for jonathan gannon's defense a guy that can do so many different things he's a freak athlete has the length uh is a playmaker he can press he can even press from the slot which is rare very sticky in coverage he has a ton of upside because he has the traits you look for um so i think he could be i think mainly he's going to play outside corner because they have a number of guys that can play in the slot but he is really good in the slot so i love the versatility but he could be like a De devin witherspoon type player maybe not quite as physical but um you know he can be that type of player there for the Cardinals. So, uh, like I said, I'm I'm higher on Max Melton. I'm higher on the secondary than pretty much everyone else. I actually think, for me, it kind of starts with this guy. Like, he could be their best guy in the secondary right away. Um, and, and it kind of goes into that secondary being better than, than um, what people think here. So, excited about Max Melton to see what he's got. In year one, B.J. Ajilari, big-time breakout guy to watch. Uh, their second-year edge rusher from LSU. Remember, this was a raw prospect last year because he was super young, and he and he still had to, he still had to work with them, kind of get uh, you know a little bit more you know, in terms of finishing, finishing sacks, finishing plays, um, and he had really good you know a bend you know dip move on the outside, but he needed to add a little bit more, and it was it was great at LSU. So he already had that polish, but he had to add a little bit more after that. So as a raw prospect, I thought he was pretty productive last year. He really got going down the stretch, uh, and it was a guy that I I really really grew on me like that last month going into that draft. A guy that I really got excited about. So this is a guy to get excited about. I think he's ready for a big time breakout year in his second year, his sophomore year here. So and they need the they need somebody on the defensive front to to come alive here and get going. This is the guy to watch here. And then number one, of course, you have to go Kyler Murray. You know, didn't start last year. So we can't really judge him off last year, kind of getting thrown in. They were trying to call plays and model that offense around Josh Dobbs and those guys, you know, so now, now it's full go. Like we said, they're going to, they're actually going to show what their identity is. They're going to, we're going to see what the team's about. And it starts with Kyler Murray in this offense. You know, when he was with that King in that Kingsbury offense, it was, they, they brought Kingsbury in for a reason. I mean, they had Kingsbury and Murray were in there at the same time for a reason. Uh, they fit each other's style, right? And Murray was basically playing a college style offense in there with Kingsbury, um, you know, spread because that kind of fits his strength, but it also kind of it hides the the, the height disadvantage a little bit in that offense, really spreading things out and keeping things kind of open and clear for him. So now it's it's a pro style offense, you know, under, under Drew Pence, Pence saying that they want to run a pro style offense and. They want to see if Murray can do that. And he had some flashes last year. But, again, I really think they held back. They hid some things last year because they knew it wasn't their time. They weren't in a rush. Uh, now, starting in week one, they are not hiding things. They are going to go full goal with their identity, what type of system, what type of team this is. So we are going to learn if Kyler Murray can play in a pro-style offense. And it's going to be it's going to be a big deciding fact. Two things this year. Can he do that? Uh, and can he stay healthy? 
And if the, either of those things it ends up being a negative in the negative column this year, they may look for their future quarterback. Now, I'm not predicting that's going to be the case. I think Kyler Murray is definitely talented enough, good enough. I don't see a reason why he gets hurt again. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but it can happen to anybody. Um, so I think he's the guy of the future. But for whatever reason, if he shows maybe he's not a pro-style guy or um, he can't stay healthy, they're a team that we might be talking about you know, next off season, could they be looking for a quarterback? So a big year for Kyler Murray coming up. Uh, some games to watch. You definitely have to go at the Commanders game in Week Four. Usually, the first two to three to four weeks are kind of nonsense. Anything can happen. But then the kind of Week Four or Five range is kind of where where you you really start to learn what teams are about, and you kind of can predict the future of the season. So it's a big week for that reason. But all the other reasons, people kind of put the Cardinals and the Commanders. Some people will disagree, but they kind of put them in the same tier, um, I guess towards the bottom of the league. So it could be you know must wins for those teams to prove that they are they're not in that tier. They're better. Kingsbury, the offense coordinator for the Commanders, um, knows some things about Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray and company know some things about Kingsbury. So it should be an interesting game plan. It's gonna be a fun game to watch. Um, and then we got the Chargers game in week seven. I think both these teams like the weakness for me is run defense for both those teams. Interior defensive line. And linebacker, uh, big issue. So it could result in them kind of struggling to stop the run. And these are two teams that have kind of struggled to stop the run over the last few years. So I think that's going to – and there are two teams that – well, I think the Chargers' strength should be passing the ball. But Harbaugh, Roman, and the running backs they have, the physicality of the offensive line they have, they will be very capable of pounding the football, be very good at, with it any week. And against the Cardinals' run defense, it, it should be an all-out run fest. And you look at the Cardinals' run offense – and the Chargers run defense, It should it, this should be a, just a run fest, back and forth, physical, old school football. So if, if you love that, you're going to love this game in week seven. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. And then the Vikings in week 13, I think another, you know, two teams people kind of put in the same tier. Um, I think this is a chance for the you know, the Cardinals. The Vikings are a little better stopping a run, but uh, maybe don't have the best corners in the world uh, for a chance for Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison Jr. to really get going. Um, you know, so in it, in uh, it, if for some reason one of these teams, Vikings, Cardinals, I think people think those teams could be pretty like a little sneaky, uh, could be a little better than you think because they do have talent. Um, you know, young, fast teams like to think good coaching staff. So maybe if one of these teams is fighting for a playoff spot, I think it's a must win down here in week in week thirteen. So we'll see. And then some fans takes, uh, Cam Sullivan. Uh, X subscribers always get on here. Uh, hopefully, full season of color. Yeah, that's a big what, what we're watching here. Murphy Bunting and Melton Duo. Uh, yeah, we kind of talked on that a bit. I think it's better than people think. I think it's vers more versatile than people think. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, what is Harrison Jr.'s ceiling? Is he a top receiver in the league right away? I'd say he's actually a guy to watch when it comes to durability. There are some people, some of the people that actually thought neighbors or a dunze were better than Harrison Jr. as a prospect. Not a ton of people, not a ton of teams. There are some teams that would have drafted those guys before mainly neighbors. Um, but those guys knock what Harrison Jr. It wasn't necessarily. They think those guys are better than Harrison Jr. In terms of talent. I heard their knock was the, the, the you know, some of their words were, they think he's a little soft actually at times. Harrison Jr. Like he, he's they worry about the durability, like minor things like hamstrings, you know, popping up here and there. Um, it could happen out of nowhere with him. So I, I didn't really have that take, uh, but there are some, you know, people that think, you know, can this, is this guy going to be 100% full go out there? And then maybe that people let kind of the whole combo, the pre-draft process get in their heads a little bit with that. But there are teams and people within the league that have said that. Uh, so is he full go hundred percent strength all season long? Um, is it going to be, you know, a little hot and cold with him. So the, I think that in terms of talent, my point is in terms of talent, I think he can be up there. Like hard to say top receiver right away, but up there for sure based on talent right away. But are there going to be some things like that holding him back to be, he's going to be really good either way. If he's on the field, he'll be really good. So we're not debating that. Um, so that's something to watch, I suppose. Tough schedule. Yeah, they do have a tougher schedule, um, you know, with the teams they play, the division they they are in. So it could be a little tricky, even though I do think they could be a sneaky team. What else we got? Tyson Wilson. The Cardinals are my second favorite team this year. I believe they'll be 
the Texans of this season, so Texans last year, so this year the Cardinals will be that team, or maybe even the 2021 Bengals, and they could be potentially get the fifth seed. Also, the draft class reminds me of the Jets 2022 class. So, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see them being that sneaky because they got a good quarterback. Um, they possibly have a star weapon. They have a really good running game uh, with a one-two punch there and the star weapon with uh, Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr., and they have some other options as well. They signed Zay, Zay, Don't forget they signed Zay Jones not that long ago. Not saying he's a star, but another option. Um, then defensively, it's very well coached. The secondary should be pretty strong. They could have guys break out like, such as a B.J. Ajilari and others, um, you know, so they could be pretty sneaky. Maybe some of this is a little bold, but they could definitely be sneaky. Uh, RS Swimmer uh, is awesome for Gannon, the clear-cut worst GM head coach duo in the division. Will it? Yeah, I mean, they. I think it's better than people think. I think Jonathan Gannon, even though he's kind of a weirdo, I think he's be- a lot better than people think, especially as a defensive coach. I guess we'll learn if he could be a head coach. Like, to me, like, he for sure is a defensive coordinator in the NFL. Like, for sure. 100%. Good, good. And we haven't really fully seen it, like I kind of preached in this video, uh, his full defense. Um, but, I mean, I guess it's a really good really good division in terms of GM head coach. I, I Schneider and McDonald a little bit to be determined. Schneider's done a really good job drafting recently. Um, still to be determined on his approach to who they're letting go and signings and uh, the last few years. But um, and McDonald, I think, is a really good hire, really good defensive coach, but still to be determined there. So it's just more so it's just a really good division in that regard. Um, do the draft classes make up for the lack of veteran talent? Uh I mean, I think they have veteran talent. I mean, some of their best players are pretty young, but uh, it's the younger guys are more of a factor, you know, uh, these days in the NFL in general. So um, I do think the draft classes, because since they are good and they have those players, they could make up for it. Uh, what to watch? Will be Ajilari take that? Yep. So he's on the same page with me. Uh, take uh, Kyler Murray will be MVP conversation. Lead the team anywhere from nine to eleven wins in a wild card spot in the playoffs. Um, it sounds really bold, but Murray was in the MVP conversation just a few years ago, um, you know, and they are sneaky enough to kind of pull off more wins than people think. We kind of talked about that. I'm a little higher on them now after doing this video as well, so we'll see. A little bold. Uh, when I'm watching, can Mike Wilson get better and become solid receiver too? Yeah, he was really solid last year. I mean, maybe a little more consistent in terms of uh, production game to game, but it was what we want, but yeah, he, he had some flashes last year, so he could be that guy. Will Paris Johnson Jr. get better? I definitely think so. I'd watch for a bigger jump for him. Definitely a guy to watch. Uh, Marvin Harris Jr. becomes a thousand yard receiver. McBride, 950 plus yards. Connor reaches. I think the bullish part is Connor because I do think they mix in Benson there, but but defense is one of the worst in the league. Yeah, I think it's pretty bold. I think the defense can be a lot better than that take. I think the defense will. I guess the yeah. It is tricky, though, because my, my worry is stopping the run. And if you can't stop the run, it affects so much more. And people don't realize that because it's the passing league right now. But if you can't stop the run, teams are going to watch it on film. They're going to game plan like, hey, we're just going to run the football because that's how you beat them. And then we're going to hold the ball for a long time. We're going to drain the clock. We're going to limit their chances. It's the easiest way to beat teams in, in, in the NFL if teams cannot stop the run. It is the simplest way, and it's a tough It's tough for the teams to win that can't stop the run. I think they'd be better stopping a run this year than they were last year, but they were awful last year. I still think it could be an issue. So if they are really, really bad stopping a run, it's going to make everything else look worse. So there is a chance the defense is pretty bad, but I think it's going to be coached better because it's going to be more of Gannon's defense this year, actual defense. The secondary should be strong. And some of these young guys step could could step up here. Um, I, yeah, I guess the rookie, another rookie, Darius Robinson, is a big factor as well. Like, how will he be used, the versatility? I don't know if anybody mentioned this. No one's really – yeah, so I do want to talk about him a little bit more. How is he going to be using me a factor? Um, is he going to have to lead that, that, that front, um, you know, because he, he could be, and he's, he's a raw prospect, a lot of upside, but he could be a factor right away. And something else people didn't really touch on, talk, well, he mentioned Connor a little bit, but yeah, how uh, I talked about it a little bit, I guess. How do they split up Connor and Benson? That's a big question as well. Um, so is that everything there? Yep. So some good, bold predictions. A team that, yeah, it's a team that could be sneaky good because people really don't know what to expect from them, their identity. So teams don't know how to game plan for them. Um, I, I think the coaches kind of saved on both sides, kind of saved their identities for this year. They have a lot of young, athletic 
uh, athletes, you know, the talent in there. Uh, that could be a factor, very strong secondary explosive offense would be pretty balanced. But a reason they could kind of be underwhelming is they're still a work in progress. Uh, the run defense, um, you know, when the interior defense line, the linebackers, uh, maybe health on offense, the offensive line's a little bit of a question, even though we do think it got a little bit better. So uh, a team that I'm very curious about this year, to say the least, the Arizona Cardinals. But check out that playlist pinned in the comments and on the channel with the teams that we have done. We will get to every NFL team. Again, first comment on this video. Uh, decides which team I do next, so a little different this time around with this video. Usually it's the most comments, but uh, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.